What's going on guys, the Inhuman P10, I'm back with more Fate Grand Order. It's time to continue on in Goddard Demerung. So, Lord of Creation, Indu. Again, I don't know why they bother having these beginning and ends. It's just redundant, because half the time, whatever they're foreshadowing, like with the Demonic Sword thing, didn't matter until the ending bit. The first part literally didn't do anything. Shutting down high-speed mode now. Good work hanging on, everyone. Our current estimated location is atop what used to be Lake Vanern, the lake northwest of Lake Vatern. Vatern? Whatever. Which means this village almost certainly didn't exist in proper human history. We're here. Welcome to my village. Fufu! This is so strange and wonderful. I thought guests only showed up in stories. I never thought I'd get to actually welcome real guests myself one day. And oh, and, 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 you must both be envoys too. Have you never had anyone visit from outside your village before? No, we haven't. All the villages really keep to themselves. Oh, God. It's actually starting to wear on me a little bit. <laughs> I might end this session off after this, uh, after this, uh, section. Oh, Mm. Oh, but maybe it's different at the other villages? I see. What's this village called? Come to think of it, you never did tell us your village's name, did you, Gerda? That part, the part that stands out the most to me is the large gate that makes up what looks to be the only entrance. I don't know much about art architectural design, but this place does seem to have its own unique style. I also sense powerful magic, magical energy here. The whole village is surrounded by a bounded field centered on that large gate. It's designed to keep away giants, beasts, and other beings related to Magecraft. I can feel it weighing down on me too, though only a little. Although I didn't notice it at all until I was inside. I'm guessing it's the snow. The magical energy mixed in with the snow and ice and the magical energy that makes up this village's boundary Bounded field are extremely similar. It's a very static, sedi uh, sedate kind of energy. S set it, set it, S sedate, and as if its presence were the most natural thing in the world. It's calm, gentle, and very stable in the amount of magical energy it holds. Maybe kind is a little too vague, but I'm not quite sure how else to put it. Maybe it's designed to enrich people's lives? I don't fucking know. Yes, that's a much clearer way to put it, senpai. All that aside, this village is really spacious. Maybe that's because there are so few houses and a large plot of farmland in the center. I can see they grow all sorts of crops here. There's wheat, numerous fruit trees. It's just like uh, Gerda said. It's as warm here as it was in that flower garden. This explains how people could survive even on a lost belt predominantly made up of snow, ice, and fire. Although there's still one thing I don't understand. If bounded fields are so crucial to enduring people's way of life here, who put them up? Foo foo foo! Maybe Magecraft is just a part of everyday life here, even more than it was in Russia. Or maybe there's someone in these villages who knows how to work with bounded fields. A bounded field? Are you talking about the charm on the gate? I didn't really understand most of what you were talking about, but um, I do know that every village gate always has a charm on it. The envoy put them there for us. They keep out all the giants, the ice beasts, really anything scary. I'm surprised you two didn't know that since you're envoys. Is that just the way it works, Lady Mash? Oh, uh, well... I think you may have the wrong idea about us. I don't believe we're what you call envoys. Although if envoys is the term you use for visitors, then I suppose we might qualify. Uh, what? Oh, I got through. Let me see, is this thing on? Ahem. <clears throat> this is the shadow border. Can you hear me, field ops? Ah. Uh. Foo foo! D director Director, it's you. I thought we couldn't communicate once we got a few kilometers away. Yes, well, my technical advisor has been testing out a number of different things in between her work on repairing the border. 
All under my impeccable supervision, of course. And thanks to those efforts, we've been able to deploy Mr. Code Drone to extend our comm range. I was told it should help us both observe and communicate over greater distances, but I didn't think it'd just suddenly start working now of all times. Ugh, but just my luck. Neither our technical advisor nor any staff are here in the cockpit right now. They're all out repairing the border. Oh, oh, who's this tiny see-through tubby man? He's fat. I've never seen a fat person before. So this is what they call chubby? Chubby? Is he a friend of yours, Lady Mash? Does that mean he's an envoy too? Foo, foo! Tubby? Did she call me Tubby? Uh, no, she called you Chubby. Oh no, she said Tubby. My bad. No, whatever, same diff. Well, um, this is a communicator. It's a tool we have for talking to people far away. Also, um, the director may be big-boned, but... Is that child a native of this place? Then you must have found a safe village. Then again, if that f uh, foul-mouthed little brat who doesn't understand that mocking people's body types is not acceptable as anything to go by, then our culture must still be at the nadir of civilization. Say what now? <laughs> I don't how you say what? <laughs> Well, no matter. Children, too, tend to be naturally cruel. My, squin my skin is quite thick by this point. I'm not the least bit bothered. So never mind the child. Just give me a detailed report about your situation. So, uh, here's the lowdown. Here's the 411, doctor. Director, whatever. So you made your way to this village after rescuing that child. It seems you put your experience in Russia to good use. Or, I suppose I should say my supervisory role in Russia has benefited you even after that loss belt. Not bad making it this far, uh, this far, this fast. Let me begin by congratulating you on your good work. I'll be sure to share your information with the rest of the staff, including the technical advisor. Now, given that our con connection is still unstable and we can't talk for long, it seems it's time I took matters into my own hands. That sounds pretty dangerous for you. What do you think I am? Some adventure craze nut like the rest of you? I'm talking about the remote interrogation of a local via this transmission. But not this child, obviously. We won't get anything useful out of her. Now then, little one. Me? Run along and get your parents, if you don't mind. I need to talk to them. Parents? What are those? Yeah, your mother and father, of course. If they're dead, your legal guardian will do. Oh, you mean the goddess? I hear she is everyone's mother. Every human is the goddess's child, after all. But I'm afraid the goddess isn't here, Mr. Chubby. Oh. Gerda. Uh, don't tell me you have no concept of parents. I've never heard of such a culture. I suppose it is possible for some newer religions, but given your primitive-looking clothing, I can't imagine your village is part of something like that. What is going on? Uh, Alright then, just fetch me your village elder, or mayor, or your supervisor, I don't know. A supervisor? Yes, a capable, distinguished person who is in charge of everything like me. Distinguished? Does being a chubby person make you distinguished? That has nothing to do with it! Good heavens, girl. Didn't your parents raise you to- No, right. You don't have parents, do you? Well, you know, somebody with authority in your village. What? This is the most entertaining conversation I've ever been a part of. The most amazing person in your village. The one you can always count on to help you out. Are you talking about envoys? Lady Mash is certainly more amazing than normal people. It, the only other amazing people I can think of are the giants and the envoy. But the envoy isn't coming until tomorrow. Envoy? Gerda calls me an envoy too. I'm afraid I'm still not sure what she means by it. Oh, what I mean? An envoy's an envoy, right? I mean, no human could ever defeat a giant. Ahem. But never mind that. There is no space between my period. 
Wait. That came out weirder than it intended. <laughs> that, that was not what I meant to say. Oh, God. <laughs> that was not what I meant to say. All right. <laughs> oh God. <coughs> Throat is starting to get the better of me. <clears throat> Anyways. I still need to show you around properly, don't I? You welcome, honored envoys. Oh, you too, Mr. Tiny See Through Chubby. Welcome to our home, Village 23. Please let me repay you for saving my life. You can spend the night in my house. I'll be 13 soon, after all, so I've already got my own house. Of course. Oh, God, my eyes. Ugh. Ugh. Uh, we can have dinner in front of my fireplace. Oh, I can get out that meat I've been saving for a special occasion, too. This will be great. We can have freshly baked bread. Oh, God, there is something in my fucking eye. Holy shit. Oh, God. And I'll get some fish, too. I'll go fishing before it gets dark and make sure to catch the biggest one in the pond. Foo 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 foo! Wait, hang on. What did you say your village's name was? Village 23, right? Yes, that's right. What about it? Well, um, it just sounds a bit... Why is your village num numbered? Question marks. Great. I'm glad you're fucking useful. But there's nothing strange about it. After all... It's Gerda. Gerda's back. Welcome back, Gerda. I can't believe it. You really came back from the outside. And you did get the herbs legends talked about. Now nah, Laura's gonna be alright. Hooray. I'm not doing voices for children. I fucking hate children. Who are they? Uh, there's a white animal too. It is an animal, right? What is it? Is it a mouse? Wow, you're so pretty, miss, and your black armor is so awesome. Pretty hair, pretty face. You look like the envoy. Oh, are you an envoy too? You're... <laughs> you know, I would almost call this like really weird writing but Gordolf is kind of right. Children are often very blunt about things. Your boobies are so big. Oh, you look so cool in that armor. Uh, I, uh, Senpai, what's... That old guy's so tubby. Why are you smaller than us, even though you look so old, mister? Uh, be quiet. Do you ever... Ch do you children ever stop squawking? Just run off and play, would you? Or better yet, go and fetch a grown-up. I don't actually see any grown-ups. That's true. I haven't seen a single adult yet. Since this village appears to rely on agriculture for its survival, it may be that everyone of working age is just out in the fields. But if that's the case, then why aren't there any elderly people around? What? Is that true? Well, of course it's mostly children here. That's how it is everywhere, right? I'm sorry, what? Besides, you're so funny, Lady Mash. Everyone knows the elderly are just from legends. What? Well, let me push my desk back a little bit. There we go. Now, as I was saying. What? <laughs> of course you're not going to find any in a village. I mean... Every grown-up leaves when they turn 25, right? What? As in leaves the village? Of course. Huh? What in the world are you saying? They couldn't possibly survive out there. What with all the giants roaming about? Yes, I know. Every grown-up with a 10-year-old ch child leaves once they turn 25 and gets eaten by a giant. 
What? Uh, I gotta drink. Uh, um. What? <laughs> yeah, I can't imagine why this got pruned. What? I should I just realize they have actual alcohol sitting in my fucking uh, sitting in my fucking desk. It's not like anything strong or anything. It's just like some kind of little shot bottle. And I'm just like, yeah, fuck it. Probably, I should try drinking this for like stream one day, just see how fucked up I get. Whoops. Or try drinking it for like recording, see how fucked up I get. Probably not that bad. I don't think it's actually anything strong. I think it's just like a. Let's see how, how much proof it is. Yeah, it's only like uh, it's only 49. It's only like 49.5 percent. Probably tastes like ass though. All fucking alcohol tastes like ass. Anyways. I don't usually drink, but I just felt, eh, you know, fuck it. <laughs> I don't usually drink. Might as well try it once. Back to this, though. So nobody ever lives past 25. And if you haven't had a child by 15, then you have to go too. I've heard that's true for every village. At least all the villages from 1 to 100. W what? Th then you're telling us there are no adults over the age of 25 there. None! And that people who turn 15 without having children have to leave to die! Uh-huh. Children and the grown-ups raising them are the only ones allowed to live in the hundred villages the goddess and her envoys made for us, after all. <laughs> what? Um, Lady Mash? Lord Vane? Mr. Chubby? I'm sorry, I don't understand. Why are you all so shocked? That's just how it is. What was that voice? Ease. It's the same everywhere, right? I'm turning 15 in two years, so if I don't have any children by then, splat. That'll be it for me. Wow, this is fucked up. Oh, God. Dude, that's fucked up. I don't know which is worse. I mean, at least the Yaga acknowledged that it was a kill or be killed situation. Didn't fucking like it, but he acknowledged it. But this is just... God, there's something about a child accepting that if they don't do something by a certain age, that's it. They're just dead and it's just accepted. This is absurd. Everything you're saying is ridiculous. Well, the way your mind works is, too. Do you even grasp what you're saying? You're telling us there are only a hundred people in each village. That you have to die if you don't have a child before you turn 15. That you'll die in two years. Are you some kind of homunculus? How can you say things like that as if they were normal? You even look happy about it. Oh. Huh? You too, Fu? What happened? Why do you sound so sad all of a sudden? Oh no, did I say something to offend you again? Uh oh, now what do I do? That's some hardcore fucked up shit. Meanwhile, at the Emerald City. It's not actually Emerald, but... What an elegant castle you have here. I like it very much. It's wonderfully designed, of course, but I also love your choice of materials. It's made completely out of ice, after all. No human could ever live here, no matter how beautiful it is. The perfect witch's castle. Something humankind yearns for, but can never hope to reach. You really do have excellent taste, your majesty. Who said this was made to my tastes? Oh my, you mean it isn't? Does that mean you'd prefer something more typical, like Cinderella's castle? Cinderella? I've never heard the name, but she certainly sounds interesting. 
She must have lived a life full of hope and surprise, one far removed from the life of a woman of ice and snow like myself. Oh yes, without a doubt. The early part with her stepsisters abusing her is great, but then she comes out on top at the end and her stepsisters get their just desserts. It's a positively repulsive story. I'm just so relieved that you aren't like that, your majesty. After all, you hate happy endings, don't you? Just look at this cold, uh, utilitarian world you've designed. It makes me want to friend you on Mage Book. Alright, that line is, uh, that line, that line, no. God, you know what I just realized? I was just talking about alcohol not five seconds ago. Fate has literally drove me to drink. This is what it's done to me. Anyways. I'd love to know just how many human lives you've seen come to a miserable end. After all, you didn't build this castle for humanity to enjoy, did you, oh goddess? No, I did not. This castle exists for me, not for the benefit of humans. I will admit that Odin was a fine man in his own right, but he was also a god. He would never bestow upon me a ga castle designed to accommodate humans. The Allfather would never concern himself with human weakness. The thought would never even cross his mind. Indeed, humans are weak, frail, so very fragile. Their lives are snuffed out by the mere passage of time. That is why they will always need the boundless love of a god to sustain them. Oh my, love you say? I guess I had you figured wrong after all. So that's how you're running this place. You have a hundred villages with about a hundred residents in each, making for a worldwide population no more than 10,000 people. Under most circumstances, they would just end up going extinct, but you've kept them around for generations without letting their numbers increase. Their world revolves around the empty happiness of their daily lives and the heartless suffering that comes right at the end. There's no point in tormenting people like that. No wonder I've been so unmotivated here. It turns out this place was filled with love all along. Couldn't possibly get further from my tastes. Of course. Humans must not die out. They too are my beloved children. They too survived the days of scorching flame. As their god, I will never stop loving humans. I cannot speak to other worlds, but that is the way of this one. I decided long ago that I would love my children for eternity. Why would I ever destroy them? Then you really have no intention of destroying humans? Does that mean your majesty thinks they're worth protecting? You certainly ask many strange questions, Fox Woman. I would never think to destroy them. Every creature in my domain is treated the same way. Did I not tell you what that was? It is a simple question. Do I kill them or love them? If they are an enemy, then I kill them. If not, I love them. To be the mother of Scandinavia is to love all creatures, great and small. None must die out. None shall die by my hand. Even if Odin himself proved to be incapable of such a feat, I will never stop trying, no matter how many thousands of years it may take. That said... Yes? That said at times, the giants must be offered a sacrifice. <laughs> 